Hey guys, how's it going? It's Chris here. We're going to be doing a pretty quick podcast. I don't know how long this episode is going to be. I'm probably shooting for about 20, 30 minutes, but I wanted to record this real quick because today I'm leaving to go to the hotel that we're staying at. Me, my mom, my sister, and I guess one of her friends is going with us too. We're staying at a hotel the night before I go to, I get on the plane to go to Michigan because my flight leaves at like 9 a.m. and it's leaving out of uh, Boston Logan, uh, Logan International Airport, or whatever you want to call it, up in Boston, Massachusetts, and that's like a two and a half, three hour drive from here. So obviously, in order to make that flight on time, we would have to leave day of at like five in the morning to make sure we got there um, with enough time for me to get through checking in and everything. And traffic in Boston, especially around that time, is horrendous. So we're doing what we did last time, which is staying at a hotel the night before so we can get up and get there, get up for like seven o'clock and get there for eight or whatever have you, give me enough time to do everything I need to do. So today, currently, it is August 9th. Um, It is 12.20 p.m. I leave. My mom should be picking me up at around three o'clock. And um, that's the plan for today. We're going to go to the hotel. Probably kids are going to swim in the pool and we're just going to hang out, play some card games or whatever have you, just chill, and then that. So I actually did record a podcast, a solo cast, um, like a week and a half, maybe 10 days ago, but I just never got around to editing it. And honestly, I didn't talk about a whole lot. There is one story that I'm going to insert from that podcast into here because I don't want to tell it again, but I'm just going to cut that out and pop it in right here. I was talking about trying to have a yard sale, or maybe that was a second. Either way, recently I tried having a yard sale, and I was never able to find a day to do it. Either it was always a thunderstorm, or it was an insane heat wave, or it was threatening some kind of weather or violence against my life to where I couldn't commit to having the yard sale. So I finally managed to, this past Monday, uh, today is Thursday, turning Friday. So this past Monday, I managed to go out there and have it. It was like 85 degrees outside, but I was in the shade, so it was like a cool 75. Um, It was... a little bit humid, um, just given the location, just how, where I live, you know. Um, and I will include some pictures in the link dump down below of the stuff I had on the table for the yard sale, uh, just in case you guys are curious what the spread looked like. It wasn't a whole lot, like I said, uh, I've said before, it was mostly my stuff. But then I had uh, Nin contributed some things. Dylan had a couple of things he put out there. My mom had some like clothing and whatnot that she put out there, and um, I. So, yeah, I set it up, and from about 1 p.m. till 6 or so p.m., when it started to um, thunder and downpour, I had, like, mm, around 10 or so people show up. <laughs> Not very many. I had, before I even started the art sale, I was still 30 minutes out, and I was unloading stuff. I was, you know, bringing stuff from my car down there and unloading whatever have you. I had some lady pull in and she looked at a box of, or a tote full of Pokemon cards that my older brother Henry put out there to sell. And she was thinking about getting them and then she decided she was going to get her husband, come back with the kids, and they, uh, she got out with him, left the kids in the car. They were busy watching Spongebob, I think, on the portable DVD player or an iPad, probably an iPad given it's 2023. And uh, so her and her husband kind of looked around a little bit and only ended, I mean, they didn't end up getting the Pokemon cards, but they did end up spending like 20 bucks on some stuff. So I had like a little notebook and I was writing down for each person that sold an item, I'd write down what it, whatever it sold for. So they came back and instead of buying the Pokemon cards, just bought $20 of other stuff. So unfortunately, didn't really get it there. I was going to sell her the cards for 100 bucks, and then I said I'll go down as low as 75 just to get them gone, but they still said no, which is probably a good thing as Henry would not have been happy if I sold them for $75, but listen, you give the, you give them to me for the yard sale, whatever it gets them out of there goes. You're you're, you know, you're committing to getting rid of them for whatever I sell them for. So, that's just the way that goes. Anyway, it did not go great overall. Me, Dylan, and Nin sat down there for, like I said, from 1 till about 6 or so. I had yard sale signs set up. I had four total, but I didn't have them set up too far from my place. Um, I could have set them up in better spots, and I will set them up in different spots. But I will need more signs because people are stupid, and I need to have like a like a checkpoint system, you know? You can't just put an address on it and hope they stop and put in their GPS. They want to follow the signs until they get there. So, and the way my driveway and everything is set up, it's easy enough to to miss, even with the sign. Um, Did have a couple of other people stop by, and I think overall total, we sold like 
$26 worth of stuff. Not very many. Again, it was on a Monday. It would be better if I was able to actually do it on a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday, or multiple days in a row. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do that um, unless I plan on taking out and setting up and putting away all the yard sale stuff every day before I go into work, which I could do if I wanted to set up the yard sale at like 9 a.m., which I fucking won't because I got to leave for work at 2 p.m., so I'd have to, like, set up stuff from 9 to 10, take me, like, a well, half hour or so to set things up. Wouldn't take too, too long. Uh, set up the signs as well. Change the advertisements to actually advertise just to say, like, while the signs are up, you know, <clears throat> while the signs are up that it's active kind of thing. I don't know. It's a pain in the ass, but not didn't do too great. Kind of disheartening, but I will try again. I need to get rid of that shit, so... Uh. I'm still kind of reeling with that, but that's okay. Um, something interesting happened also while I was at work last week. Um, so I did go and buy... We're transitioning from the yard sale thing, by the way. I did go and buy um, 10 copies of my first book, Vengeance Children of Faust, so that way I would always have some copies on hand that I could sell as a signed copy or donate to a library or something like that. And while I was at work, we have a break room where plenty of people frequent throughout the day. Even people just walk by and look in there, or there's vending machines, people stop in there. So I just grabbed a book, and I plopped it on the windowsill, because there were a couple of other books left there. Sometimes there's some free stuff left in there. I've taken home probably 40 DVDs of movies and TV shows. I'm like, oh, cool. I just have a stack of DVDs I get to take home for free. People leave, like, thermoses, mugs, clothes... Um, holiday stuff, just random things. They just drop off a box and free-for-all go for it, which is cool because, like I said, I get a bunch of good DVDs. I have, I, I like, <laughs> uh, I just, you know, expanded my collection, and it's really cool. Anyway, uh, so I saw some books that were in there at one point, and I decided I'm just going to drop off one of my books. I'm just going to plop it on the windowsill, title out so you can see it, so, like, the spine sticking out so you can see it, and just walk away. And I put it there. And then I didn't work the next day, and I came back the next day after that, and I just saw it. I peeked in there, and it was gone. I'm like, oh. So one of two things happened. Because previously, I have left uh, business cards for my book in there. It just has the Amazon QR code and uh, the name of it on there. I've left those in there, and I've come back the next day, and they were all gone. So, like, just thrown in the trash. <clears throat> so I expected, okay, well, somebody saw that book and just for some reason this is how cynical I am singled mine out and threw it in the trash okay fair enough whatever there goes nine dollars for my copy that I bought because I get them cheaper uh, but I go and do my shift and like 20 minutes into my shift the assistant manager walks in or walks like in uh, towards me in the room and she has her arms folded over her like crossed over her like midsection like her lower ribs and my book is like between her arms pressed against her torso and she's like do you what so i don't remember exactly what she said but she's like do you know that there's somebody who wrote a book that has your name that shares your name i'm like oh really <laughs> kind of like a oh, fuck oh no she's gonna yell at me for leaving it in there she's gonna give me some kind of, not gonna yell at me but she's gonna give me shit like don't do it again you shouldn't be doing that blah blah because I have such the mind of and this is what I've you know like been taught by being having a bludgeoned, bludgeoned in my head over the years is self promotion is basically a sin against God and nature itself like if you self promote fuck you you're a piece of shit and you should die that's that's the ideology that's how people view self-promotion a lot of times anyway wherever i go it's fucking frowned upon it's disgusting and they want to spit up your nose but so she's like yeah so someone shared your name i'm like really that's interesting just kind of like not knowing what to say not know she's joking or she's being serious and then um she's like uh is this is this yours i'm like yep um, which she's like, interesting, because I looked up online and somebody else popped up. There's a different Chris Olm who actually writes comic books. Um, way more famous, well, not way more, but like obviously, yeah, yeah, way more famous than me, because if you search up Chris Olm, he pops up. Um, he's the dude that pops up as, an, as a writer. So, um, but she's like, yeah, so I looked up, and I, I just thought, this somebody else shares your names. I saw this other guy. I'm like, no, that's that's me. That's mine. She goes, well, I'm letting you know that I'm going to take it home. Is that okay? I'm like, yeah, that's that's 
that's why I left it there so someone could take it or somebody people could skim it while they were in there and maybe it looked interesting or look it up later so what it's like yeah that's why I left it so she goes yeah I'm currently reading a book right now but when I'm done I'm definitely gonna jump into it I'm like okay well, this is really cool, and I'm also in my head playing it, of like, whenever people say, oh, yeah, as soon as I'm done reading this book, I'll get to yours, and I literally never hear back from them. I've had one, two, three, three people that I know personally in my real IRL life that have said, once I'm done reading this book, I'll read yours, and I've never heard them talk to me about it ever again, and it's been, like, years <laughs> So I'm not going to, like, pester her. I'm not going to try to make it, a th like, uh, consistently remind her or anything like that, but... And every, I've given my book to a few people that I work with there. I think like two or so people I've given it to, and I've not heard from it since. When I did ask them, hey, just curious if you started, they go, no, I've been really busy, and I just won't ask again. So, and I get it. Everyone's busy, but it's still extremely disheartening. It's like, don't, don't fucking get my hopes up, you know? Don't get my nipples hard if you're just going to leave me just shirtless and waiting. You know what I mean? That was a really stupid analogy, but like, it, I'm just like... Don't do that to me. I, I've been let down so many times by people saying they're going to read it and not ever reading it, not even starting it for that matter. Um, it's super frustrating, but I hope she does read it. It would be interesting. Uh, I just didn't expect that to happen. She just grabbed it immediately and quote unquote confronted me about it in a positive way. So fingers crossed on that. But I do have a whole bunch of books just kind of hanging out ready to go somewhere. Okay, welcome back from that clip. Um, let's join this podcast. Now, the reason why I wanted to cut that bit out from the previous podcast instead of just, like, adding on or uploading that podcast before is because that podcast was, was recorded a day or two before I got my new glasses and I got, um, I believe I was waiting for card stuff to come in the mail. I was waiting for test card and test game board and stuff because I'm working on my book TCG. And obviously I recorded that, and then the stuff came in a day or two later. I still hadn't edited the podcast yet, so I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm just not going to upload that, I guess. So let's cover that real quick. Um, I did get my new glasses. I got, for $40, I got two pairs of glasses. I got a pair of sunglasses, prescription sunglasses, and regular prescription glasses. Now these ones are, they're from zennyoptical.com, which I, I'm not sponsored, but I highly recommend going to Zenny. I'm very customizable, very affordable prices for prescription lenses and even non-prescription. You can get like safety lenses, you know, safety, like construction um, prescription lenses and stuff. Um, you can use them for airsoft too, which is really cool. I might look into that. But uh, I got these glasses and the only thing I don't like about them is like my previous glasses had the more uh, wire frames that go over your ears for the temple. These ones are a bit thicker. Um, so whenever I have to wear my hat with the glasses at work, I end up getting a headache because it's a lot of uh, pressure on my head. So I end up taking off my glasses while I'm doing end of night stuff after a long shift. Just so I don't get as much of a headache. But otherwise, throughout the day, wearing them just by themselves, um, they're totally fine. And they, they're great. And the sunglasses are actually really good. I can't even, I have like my phone on my, on a little dashboard mount. And whenever I can't even, I have to turn my brightness during the summer days with the glasses on because I can't see the screen because the glasses are really good. They're really dark. Uh, they're cozy too. And they're relatively stylish, not my style, but I'm not much of a sunglasses person anyway. Even though I kind of should be wearing sunglasses more often because I have an astigmatism and I have um, natural blue eyes. So my, and I have just a general light sensitivity. So like, bright lights uh at night um led headlights at night are like i want to fucking pop your tires dude it's so fucking annoying um daytime in the summer or even like a sunny spring a, a sunny winter day where the snow on the ground and the pavement is wet and all that light is reflecting off of the white snow and the wet ground if it's a nice sunny blue day dude i cannot it's like driving through a flashbang tunnel it's horrible so i can't wait to you know have these glasses for the winter it's gonna be awesome but I did get those, so I'm stoked about that. And the other thing is, for the past couple of months, probably most of this year, I spent a lot of time developing um, a trading card game similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel or Pokemon or whatever have you, based around my book series. No, it's not a spoiler game. There's not not generally story elements to it, but like in the same way that Yu-Gi-Oh! cards sometimes have a story or lore associated with them, you can kind of get a gist of lore based around... Um, some relic and artifact cards and like field cards and stuff, but I've been trying to figure it out right now. I have about a hundred and 
60 or 170 unique cards to play. I have the entire game's rules written out for the most part. I have um, the field made, and I actually got it. A, it's a six-fold hard field, like a plastic field that you can buy and actually put the cards on, and it's really cool. Um, I, have, I have the prototype version, so there's, there's no background to it. It's just a gray background. Each card zone has just the name of the zone typed into it, and they're just white zones. It's not meant to be anything crazy. You don't, I don't need it to be anything crazy. But if I am to do anything with the field, I'll probably just make it like a blood spatter background or something like that. Um, and the one I have that I ordered as the test doesn't have the environment zone. Now, if you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! and their field zones or field cards, it's kind of like that. But this is a single zone that is occupied by a field card in which then grants effects to both players. And there can only be one active, kind of like previous Yu-Gi-Oh! You could only have one field card. If you tried to activate another one, it would destroy the opponent's field card like back in the day, back in the show and stuff like that. <clears throat> so this is kind of like that. You only get one, and each player... I've been trying to, like, figure out the rules behind the field card, and I think I got it pretty well nailed down because it makes sense with the lore of how um, Tuffle, how the demons in the book fight. And that's the whole premise of the card game. It's like a one-on-one -on -one fight between two Tuffle characters, two fighters, and you have, like, your deck master, and then you have different zones for support cards, like allies and relics, and which are kind of... Relics are, like, equipped spells, kind of, and then allies are, like general um boosts to your character on the field while they also have like the ability to become a defender where they can soak up damage for you and then give you different effects based on their defender passives and stuff like that and then the way you deal damage is by playing action cards and the action cards have specific cooldown timers when they get used where they remain on the field and then they shuffle back into the deck and you draw a card whenever an action card completes its cooldown it's a whole thing, dude. It's pretty, it's relatively in-depth, and the only thing I really need to do for it now, besides make more cards and just make sure everything is balanced as, be as well as I can, is I want to develop an app for it where you can actually keep track of stat changes on your fighter instead of, because otherwise you have to have a piece of paper or a whiteboard and just like, you know, every time you play certain cards that give different stat changes, boosts, negates, debuffs, and whatever have you, you have to physically keep track of that. Which is not fun. It would. I'd rather have it be a digital card game, honestly. But that that's like multiple thousands of dollars to get it professionally developed, and I'm not doing that, obviously. Um, so the, a physical TCG is a lot cheaper and pretty fun. I it's really enjoyable to be holding these cards. Um, but again, keeping track of stat changes is just like a slow process. It's like it's. You know, rig any card game is kind of like that, especially a card game like Yu-Gi-Oh. There's a lot of doing some math and making sure you're not forgetting to do certain things, like keep track, whatever. So <clears throat> it's a lot going on, so I'd like to develop an app for it, but I can't do that myself, and I paying for it would be a few hundred dollars, and I'd have to get the app updated in the future when more fighter cards get added because it would basically just be a database of fighter cards, and then you're just updating their stats as the game goes. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's kind of what's going on with the TCG. I'm really excited for it. It's going to be available on Game Crafter, and I'm still working on the marketing material because you have to fill out certain store banners and stuff like that. So I have to make a bunch of randomly weird-sized images for backgrounds. And, yeah, so I, I'm going to make the um, the preview make... I'm, I'm gonna, I, I have structure decks I'm making for each character based around specific strategies. I have booster packs I'm going to make. There's going to be holographic cards. It's going to be a whole thing. So if you're interested in that, make sure you bookmark my website, vengeancebooks.com, because I will be posting updates there. And I'll make an entire uh, menu on the website for the card game itself where you can directly be linked to structure decks and everything that's on there. You'll be able to buy parts individually, too. Like, if you want to buy just the game board, you can buy just that for, like, 20 25 bucks or whatever. I always keep them as cheap as possible. So whatever the price is, just know that I'm doing my absolute best because I don't care to make a profit. I care that it exists. Um, and then you can buy, like, structured decks for, like, $13, $15 or whatever have you. You can buy full bundles for 75 bucks for a field, all, like, two copies of the original first 150 cards so you have enough to make um, two people can go through all the cards and whatever. So that's been occupying a lot of my time and a lot of my mental capacity instead of writing. I am going to get back to writing once I get back from vacation, uh, which I'll be getting home about the 15th on Tuesday. 
And once I get back from that, I'll probably get back into the groove of actually writing and then doing book stuff on the side. Like, do book stuff at night, do writing in the morning, whatever have you. Just, I haven't been that busy lately besides, besides the card game, which the card game is very involved. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot going on with that. But um, just trying to come up with new card ideas and make them balance. But otherwise, it hasn't been, I've not been writing. I've been taking notes, but otherwise, that's about it. So, yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, that's what I've been doing. Um, and the plan for as far as what happens when I'm in Michigan, I'm just basically going to be at my friend Sav's house. You guys know Sav. Um, I'm going to be going to the town that I lived in to visit another friend. Um, and also, I believe on Sunday, we're going to Cedar Point in Ohio. So if you hear this and you have an opportunity and you want to possibly meet up and see me there or something like that i'm not asking anyone to go out and do that but like if you're like hey i want to go to cedar point i'll do it on sunday so maybe i can bump into chris well i don't know what time we'll be going it'll probably be earlier in the day early afternoon something like that we'll just be walking around i don't do rides so i'll be on i'll be ground level pretty much the whole time and i have not been there in years i went there once or maybe twice i don't quite remember with sam i think we went there for a church like outing like a, like her family's church did this field trip outing thing and so we went and that was a whole thing i think we went there during the halloween fest originally during it was a halloween stuff and then we went there again um just ourselves for a regular day i think if i can remember correctly i don't know i think i think the regular what was it i don't remember which one it was I, maybe the, the 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 halloween the church thing doesn't seem like they go together but that might have been it I fuck, I, dude, I don't know. I, no, it was it was the regular day where we went for Halloween because we got up in the morning. We rode, we got up in the morning, went to the their church, got on the bus, and then at like five a.m. or some shit, five or six a.m. It was still twilight, dark, and then we got there and we had the whole day. It was a sunny day, and then maybe that was the same day because I th- I have vlog clips of Cedar Point. And then in the same clothes. So maybe I only went there once. Maybe it was a regular day, and then at night they change it to some Halloween stuff. I don't fucking know, dude. That was that was years ago. That was forever ago. That was like 2017, early. Or that was like October 28, 2016, or October 2017. Fuck if I know, dude. I'm get, I, I can't. I can't think of anything. So actually, I got a, I got a real quick story. Um, the other day at the what is it? Today is Wednesday, so I think it was Sunday. Maybe I could be wrong. But I had to, I forgot that the night before I threw my laundry in the wash and I got up that morning. I did all my stuff. I was going about my day. I've also been watching House, by the way. I'm seven and a half seasons through House. That's been my thing. I've been watching House and working on the cards. It's been my entire, and playing Exo Primal, trying to get to the 100,000 kill achievement. I'm at 40,000 kills, dude, after a day and a half of gameplay of actual hours put in. That is a ridiculous achievement. But anyway, so... <clears throat> I get up in the morning and I have my laundry in. I forgot that I had it in. It's like one thirty and I have to leave but no, actually it's about one forty and I have to leave by two twenty at the latest for work to get there on time. And I it hits me. I'm like, Oh fuck. I didn't put my laundry in the dryer. And I had a lot of laundry. I had every single pair of pants I own. Um, a lot all of my work shirts and just I it was like the kind of thing where it's an extra heavy load that you run twice. It was that kind of laundry. So I went, oh, son of a fucking bitch. So I go downstairs and I throw it in there and like thinking to myself, I have the most laundry I've ever put in this dryer at once and I have 35 minutes to dry it and get a pair of pants before work. And I run it for like 10 minutes and I realize that's just not happening. So I go downstairs, I grab a pair of pants and it's sunny and it's warm. It's probably high 70s, low 80s outside sunny day no clouds so i grab a pair of pants and i go outside and i throw it on the hood of my car and i let it start baking in the sun to dry and then i go out there in like 10 15 minutes and i flip it over <laughs> so i can get an even dry <laughs> and then by the time i have to leave for work like there's no way these pants are going to be dry um lucky i luckily i actually i did have one shirt for work that i could wear so i was good there but i just needed the pants and so i go out there and i grab the pants and they're still damp so i go shit okay I go to the back of my car, I roll down the back window, and I clip, or I crimp both of the ankles of the pants into the back window. I'm like, as I drive, dude, this thing's going to be flapping in the wind, and that's how it's going to dry the rest of the way. So I do that, and it's flapping the whole way. Um, Some people definitely looked at me weird, but my pants are just like, I can hear the, um, 
the um the button the metal button clinking against the window occasionally and I go this is so fucking stupid but I get to work and lo and behold dude they're like 85% dry and I threw them on I went I went right to work it was perfect I'm like dunzo dude this is perfect I can't believe that that worked well I can't believe that it worked it's stupid that it wouldn't work but like you know what I mean if I didn't do that I I would have because you're not allowed to wear shorts at my job, and I only had some shorts to wear, and I don't feel confident and comfortable wearing shorts because my pale, thin Holocaust legs that, you know, I have to tattoo my legs enough, and then I'll feel comfortable wearing wearing shorts, which, speaking of that, I am I plan on tattooing myself so much this winter. Like, I'm just waiting for it to get cold enough to where the heat doesn't potentially, you know, because with the heat, that's just a, a microbiome for infection. And if it's nice and cold out, then I don't have to, you know, I don't have to worry about that as much. You know, because I won't be sweating, won't be as dirty. It just my body won't be it just like mm, boiling. It won't hurt as bad. So, like, I'm waiting for the winter and I'm just going to bust out leg tattoos. Like, it's nobody's business, dude. So... Yeah, I just I thought that was really funny. I had to quickly dry my fucking pants. It was so stupid. But anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up the podcast because I did have that little insert, which only took up a few minutes. But uh, that's that's the plan. That's what's going on. And I expect to see some vlog clips uploaded um, to YouTube when I get back. I might upload some shorts while I'm out there. And uh, also, I might be posting some stuff to, like, my Snapchat story. So uh, my Snapchat will be linked down below. If you want to follow my story, just add me on there. And I think that's going to be it. So thanks, guys, for listening, and I will see you all later. I'll update you guys how everything went with the podcast when I get back. So bye-bye.